G'day folks, today we're heading out to Winjana Gorge and we're going to have a look at Tunnel Creek. Before we head off to Winjana, I uh, thought I should probably go through the caravan park. So we're staying at the uh, Kimberley Entrance Caravan Park in Derby and we're here for a couple of nights. The Kimberley Entrance Caravan Park is right on the water's edge and an easy walk into the main shopping area. It's a big park with lots of trees. While the roads are bitumen with curbing all the way around, the sites for the most part look to be dirt, with a grass tent land area. There are three toilet blocks, and while I don't usually take pictures inside them, while there's nobody around, I grab these, and as you can see, they're pretty clean and well presented. Tunnel Creek, Windjana Gorge is 141, Tunnel Creek 178. Oh, g'day folks, it's been a couple of days since uh, we had a chat, uh, last time we talked we were coming out from the Bungle Bungles, um, we've driven out to Darwin, Darwin, we've driven out to Derby and uh, spending a couple of nights in Derby and we're uh, just now we're going to go out on the Gibb River Road, so we're going to get on the other end of the Gibb River Road, you may recall on the way up we went out to Alquestra, we were on the Gibb River Road. So uh, this end here, it's bitumen for quite a fair way until we turn off to go into Winjana Gorge and Tunnel Creek is where we're heading to today. So um, Tunnel Creek, I'm not sure how much of that we're going to do because part of it you've got to walk in some water to get through to the really specky bit. And uh, different times of the year, the water is at different levels. And uh, it depends on how cold that water is. That's going to be my issue. So we'll go out and see what we can do anyway and see where we are from there. So our plan today is just, yeah, basically head out to Winjana and Tunnel Creek. The Gibb River Road is blacktop for about the first 50, 60 odd kilometres before it turns to gravel. This road can be extremely rough on vehicles and trailers and many have been left behind because of bad luck or just not being properly prepared for the area. While some people will say they've taken a caravan on the Gibb River Road and never had a problem, it's all about the road conditions at the time. I was in Alquestro one time talking to a bloke and he was saying one of the fellas in his party had a new proper four wheel drive outback camper trailer and he had to stop at one of the homesteads and get it re-welded halfway along the gib. By the time they get home he reckons it's going straight to the tip. You need to be pretty well self sufficient if you want to travel the length of the gib. While you can get diesel in some places unleaded petrol may be more of a problem. However, we're only going to be doing a small part of the gib today, but we are still prepared, hopefully, for anything. Just going through some roadworks here on the Gib River Road. Um, the Gib River, I think I spoke about this earlier, but um, it's one of them iconic four-wheel drive roads that uh, most people with four-wheel drives would like to do. And... Um, they're talking about probably in the next five or so years this road being bitumenised all the way through to uh, it comes out just north of Kununurra there so um, pe 
people are, are kind of rushing to get up here to say or to do the Gib River Road so that they can say I've done the Gib River Road um, once it's bitumenized the trip from Derby through to Kununurra I, I think this road's only about 500 and something kilometers long so you could easily do that in one day as opposed to going along the Great Northern Highway which is the current route which is you know probably a little shy of a thousand kilometers um, you know, 800 or something, 900 kilometers or something. So, uh, if this becomes bitumenized all the way through, this is going to become the main road. There won't be so much uh, traffic on the Great Northern Highway. I imagine road trains are still have to use the Great Northern Highway, but for cars and tourists and all that sort of thing, it'll all be done with uh, this road instead. However, if this does become bitumenized, um, then um, all those special places off to the side like Mitchell Falls and, and them sort of things they will all stay um, gravel uh, or tracks probably a better word for them um, I can't see them ever being changed so uh, you'll still have your four-wheel drive experience doing that part of it you just won't get the, the Gib River Road part um, of it and uh, I mean Gib River Road it's something I would like to do too but I would never take a trailer or caravan or anything along here because uh, basically it probably won't be in any good condition by the time we get to the other end um, so uh, but it is on my to-do list but whether I ever get to do it it'll be a different kettle of fish I've already dropped my tyre pressures down from towing back at the caravan park, but once I hit the gravel, I've dropped them down again to 25 psi. This will help to smooth out the corrugations on the road. And as to prove a point, here is the tragic end of somebody's trip. I only hope this was the end of their Gib River Road adventure and not the start. And here is another one that is not designed for this sort of road. Winjana Gorge is in the Napier Ranges and its name comes from the Aboriginal word Wangina. To the locals, this is where the powerful creation spirits reside. William Forrester, who took up a nearby pastoral lease in 1884, misrecorded it as Winjana. So there's a one kilometre, a two kilometre and a lot of other kilometre walks through here so I don't think we'll be going quite all the way through.
Yep, I think it's pretty safe to say there are definitely crocodiles in here because from here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably a dozen crocodiles I can see just sitting over out here. I can't see from here whether they're freshwater ones or saltwater ones, but I'm not planning on uh, finding out. bloody hot in here but it's quite nice under the trees. I hate to come here when it's 40 degrees though. There's a croc sitting right there. Now there's some bugs getting around here. I can't see them, but bloody hear them. They sound like they've got a V8 engine shoved up their backside and they buzz around you. Can't find them anyway. We've walked a fair way in. And we seem to be getting further away from where the actual river is. So, unless, what do you got? Yeah, a little bit of water, but a bit of the track getting to it. So unless um, you plan wanting to do seven kilometres of walking around in the bush, quite possibly once you get to that first section, that's the bit really to stop at, turn around and go back. Because all we've got here is just quite thick scrub and bloody bugs <laughs> and yeah, while we've been up here we've seen big heaps of crocodiles around but everything we've seen is uh, freshwater crocodiles these ones all in here, I, uh, I'm pretty sure they're all freshwater crocodiles. But it um, doesn't mean you can go up next to them. Now these fresh ones here, they, they generally eat fish, um, insects apparently, or, or small animals, something that they can just swallow whole. So they don't really look at us as food. But uh, you don't want to go swimming in there. Um, saltwater crocodiles, 
um, they can be found not only in salt water but up in these fresh lakes as well. If a crocodile has to walk across rocks to get in somewhere it won't go. So if a, um, if a creek is a long way in from the ocean and there's plenty of water and no rocks they'll, they'll go all the way up there. But if there's uh, rocks around they won't climb over the rocks so it's a bit of a barrier so you don't normally get them up kind of this far in because they've got to get across rocks and sand and stuff like that which they're not really into. Um, fresh rolled crocodiles will eat us. Uh, they'll eat anything. They'll even eat themselves. Uh, well, not themselves, but other crocodiles. Um, so when you're up in the north here, you've just got to be careful about where you're going and just consider every crocodile as dangerous. It's the safest thing to do. Right, we've walked in about an hour and uh, we're going to turn around and go back and that water at Tunnel Creek is looking a little bit more inviting now. We'll go and check that out. You know you can camp here in uh, Winjana Gorge. They got it pretty well set out because over there is the campsites if you don't have generators. And in here they've got campsites for if you do have a generator. So I think that's a pretty neat idea. Then you've got the day use area which we've just come out of. And um, to my surprise I went to the loo while I was here and they have flushing toilets and water to wash your hands with. So just saw the bore on the side. So they've got a bore on the ground that uh, provides them their water. So that's pretty unusual for a national park. But uh, yeah, if you've got a van, like a four-wheel drive van like that one, then uh, you, know, you can bring them in. I'm not too keen on the idea of bringing vans in, whether it's four-wheel drive or not. But Because, um, you know, the road we just drove in on from Derby, for a gravel road, that's actually not too bad. Uh, you know, you could do sort of like 80, 90 along that without a problem. Uh, the road into Bungle Bungles the other day was even worse. Because we could only do about 20 or 30 sometimes on that. And we saw the trailer that never made it. So uh, I don't know how that bloke's going to go with his uh, road caravan that we saw coming in. Because that's definitely not designed for this sort of thing. But um, yeah, it'd be alright spot to the two camp for a couple of days I reckon. Anyway, we're going to head off to Tunnel Creek. Oh, I did my good deed for the day as well couple of tourists here. They, uh, the Sheila parked the car up and forgot to turn the lights off and walked in for two hours, came back out, flat battery. So uh, I got one of them jump packs so I was able to go over and jump start it and get it going because that's my good deed for the day. Although just thinking about it because she started the car and I said don't turn that off in a hurry and she's driven over to the picnic bench and if she's turned it off again <laughs> <laughs> then she's just stuffed it again. Oh well. Somebody else there might yeah, help her out. Okay. Let's go. Tunnel Creek is only 36 kilometres from Injana Gorge, but depending on the road conditions, it could take you up to an hour to get in there. From the car park, it's only a short walk to the entrance of the cave. Then you'll need a good torch to walk through the cave to the other side. It goes without saying that when the whitefellas came into this area, the Aborigines got a pretty raw deal, as they did throughout Australia. And here at Tunnel Creek ended a legend for the Aborigines of the region. Jan Damara was a young Aboriginal bloke, forced to work on a local cattle station. Turns out he was pretty good with a gun and a horse. During that time he became close friends with an English guy called Richardson. When Richardson joined the local cops, he took Jan Damara along to be his tracker. Together they rounded up many of the locals. Some of them were his family, Jandamara's family. 
After arresting Jandamara's uncle, Chief Elimara, he told Jandamara he was a traitor to his blood and he needed to choose between his tribal roots and his new friends. Jandamara chose family and killed Richardson. After that, Jandamara became the hunted, leading the cops on a merry goose chase between here and Winjana Gorge. The cops thought they had him trapped here in the cave and staked out the entrance. Little did they know, Janamara was sneaking out the back and raiding their cop shop for supplies. Eventually his luck did run out when Jandamara was finally taken down here at his last stand. And so ended the legend of the man they said could fly like a bird and disappear like a ghost. ready to go mining. Going into a uh, tunnel creek, you need a torch to go in there, so let's see what we can find. You can't see much, but halfway through you get some light into the cave from a part of the roof that has collapsed at some point. That was our first water crossing, and shit that water's cold. Well, we've had a couple of above the knee height water crossings. But yes, that water is cold. It looks like we're just about to come out to it now. The 
there was a smelly bit in the centre where the bats were. But can't show you anything because it's too dark and I didn't bring a light for the camera so stupid me should have done that. Got the crocodile they're talking about. It's a rock. Yeah. But it looks like a crocodile in the dark. Look at that. This is what we've come to see. Even though it's a hot day, the water looks cool and inviting, doesn't always mean it's a good place to go swimming. You are in the bush, you never know what you're swimming with. And she had no idea. There are also some examples of rock painting here as well. So what's on the other side of Tunnel Creek? Another creek. Absolutely amazing out there. So that's it, we're done. We're going to head back in again come out to where our car is and then we're going to head back into Derby so that's pretty much the day done. Okay so when you first come in it's a bit overwhelming because uh, you can't see a track there's nothing marked and you wonder where to go. Basically follow the wet patches on the ground where the people have walked in and out of the water um, And it's actually not that hard to find your way through. It's quite easy. So uh, Definitely worth doing coming out this way Do Tunnel Creek Something to keep in mind after you've spent the day out is when you're travelling back towards Derby you will be travelling into the setting sun. It makes for some spectacular scenery but it can be dangerous so be smart about your driving. You can also get some brilliant photos. Morning folks, as you can see we're back in the caravan park. Um, how was that uh, trip out to uh, Winjana and uh, Tunnel Creek yesterday? And that, that sunset, wasn't that amazing? 
The good thing is that uh, up here the sun sets fairly quick, so uh, it's not going to be directly in your face for too long. Um, our plan from here today is uh, we're heading down towards Karajini, so uh, that's pretty much it for this, uh, this video. So uh, if you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up down the bottom down there and consider subscribing. But anyway, until next time, happy travels. Thank you.